so I wrote this this morning. Sorry if my sneakers a little dirty or mouth a little dry, lipstick smeared, only leaving the pencil line. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if my hoops swing and clang in the middle of our conversation. I'm sorry if my wide hips take up most of the seat, but I'm not sorry for needing the room. Hey. I'm sorry if my curls and voice demand y'all attention. Yes. I'm sorry if my eyes are meditative and attentive to your letter draws. I'm sorry if my boots squeak and nose entreats. I'm sorry if my lips and skin shine. I'm sorry I'm so divine. Mm. I'm sorry I'm not afraid of color, number, buck, height. Darling, this world is in cruise and flight. I'm sorry that nothing really matters. I'm sorry that there's a difference between being used and being useful. I'm sorry there's a use for my mind, my kindness, and time. I'm sorry that you waste your divine. I'm sorry that time halts us in our consciousness and organicness, but does not stop our essence. I'm so sorry that we are all so divine and waste our lives being afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paper Cut started in November 18th, um, 2021, and we've just been going for it since then. Our first magazine came out May of 2022, and our second one came out just this January, so January 1st, 2023. So immediately, it was making Instagram, you know. When we first started, it was called No Name Collective because one of the things I wanted to do was let the members that I didn't have yet make the name and we voted on that. Um, but then we had to find members. Papercut Collective came about when I was talking to my friend Allegra, co-founder Allegra. She mentioned that there should be an arts collective and I have a tendency to hyperfixate on things. So instead of saying there are already a lot of artist collectives in New York, um, made one. Uh, got a lot of my friends from high school, a poetry club, as well as found a bunch of strangers. Uh, <laughs> um, no artists that I, I found about Hunter, as well as artist friends. You know, I already had connections with a good amount of artists. So I was able to make those connections and say, hey, would you like to, you know, get together and, you know, make a magazine? And we did. We did get together and make a magazine. I think since joining the collective, I think I'm just surrounded by so many artists that it gives me no choice but to be creative. <laughs> like, I have no choice but to be inspired, kind of. It's kind of like that. Like, even when I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do this. Oh, I really don't want to be, write anything or I don't want to write a poem. I can just be sitting in a room and somebody will say something like crazy or funny. And I'd be like, yo, that would, would be like, that would be a good poem, write it. <laughs> and, I, and I'd be like, I'd be like, you know what? Cause Phil told me to write it, I'm gonna write it. And then I go home and then I got a poem for, the freaking folds and it's just like being just surrounded by everybody you have no choice but to be creative you have no choice but to love what you do and then just be confident in it I know I used to like be very afraid of like thinking I wasn't a good actor I wasn't a good writer but then being surrounded by people telling me you're good and come do this come do that I want to see you do this see what I got to do help me like it's really welcoming a very loving environment so the fold is our magazine uh we have two out so far like i said one produced last may and one just came out in january and the fold features about 20 different artists each time right uh poets photographers essayists crocheters uh, different types of artists and they build off of each other in certain ways we may start with the photographers and then move into filmmakers we may go from filmmakers to the poet, right? Showing things on screen and behind screen. And then in our most recent edition of The Fold, we've had art analysis. Me and Phil were taking a women in media class and I didn't know him yet. So he came up to me and was like, hey, I'm doing this collective with all the artists. And I was like, nice. And then he's like, you should join. And I was like, no. 
So he asked about like two other times and I kept saying no because I didn't think I was like a legit artist. <laughs> um, and then at one point, I don't know what happened. I think I just kind of caved in. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so I was like, hey, Phil, you're, you're doing the collective thing, right? He's like, yes. And so I was like, can I join? And he's like, yes. And then that's kind of that's kind of been it from the, it's like yo there's other people like me cool and then they're so talented and like i learned a lot like from like these people on like how to do my own stuff so it's like inspiration as well and it's again like you have no choice but to create because mm-hmm. <laughs> like if you don't everyone's like so where's the next photo like what, what's the next like photo shoot phil <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, Phil, we be asking, you be asking. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like mainly like it's like constantly being around like people who are like inspirational and like supportive in your work, so it makes you like want to try harder. The reason why I did all this is because I think it's really important to organize artists. My favorite book is Art on My Mind by Bell Hooks, and she talks about how black women artists are often erased and, and forgotten. So, one way I found, I thought about combating that is, you know, documenting. And something that motivates me to keep documenting is fighting against erasure. So, there's a tendency, there's a tendency to forget these artists that are from different intersections. There's a tendency to forget the radical artists, the racialized artists, right? The intersectional and if you don't necessarily fit those standards which are most accessible and most palatable to the mainstream audience it's a lot easier for you to be forgotten and intentionally erased and I'm not for that I'm for remembering everybody especially the radical people who are trying to make change when I'm going through hard times it feels like I have nothing to go back to right to continue it's it's very dark and horrible at the very least, I have the collective to come back to when I'm feeling better. I could say a lot of things, mean things about myself, but one thing I cannot say is that I have done nothing. You've done something. And it's, it contradicts all of the negative, most of the negative thoughts that I could have possibly had.